Spees Field, a community athletic park located in Menominee in Michigan's Upper Peninsula, was first constructed during the Great Depression by FDR's WPA Labor Initiative. The city hoped to refurbish and expand the field with federal matching grants for a new athletic complex with football, soccer, and baseball fields. But from the beginning, the project raised issues with community members and business owners. Federal grant funds could not be released until a Phase I environmental assessment was conducted. The wheels were set in place to build the park and obtain the money uh, prior to having done the necessary uh, environmental background checks, if you will. Seeking to have the federal funds released, U.S. Congressman Bart Stupak, husband of then Menominee Mayor Lori Stupak, confirmed that the site was clean to both the EPA and MDEQ. In 2002, the city of Menominee sought bids from local contractors for the field renovation. Joe Kragowski, a longtime contractor in Menominee, hired subcontractor Dale Pape to examine the field prior to submitting a bid. Pape found several barrels of toxic paint sludge on the premises. I went out and inspected the site and found 55-gallon drums of paint waste, which was right over in this area. Really, there are two main families of contaminants, mainly heavy metals, things like uh, hexavalent chromium and lead, and then volatile organic compounds, also known as VOCs, which are uh, common industrial solvents and uh, petroleum-based often. The EPA came on site, and the engineering firm from Green Bay, Wisconsin, which was representing the city of Menominee being STS consultants, came out here. And it was in July of 2003, and the EPA representative came on site and he stated, this is a little concern, it's just a few drums. At that point in time, um, I, was, I went into an area you right in here and the entire site was a dumping ground for paint sludge. I can't be uh, convinced at all that the, the cleanup was, was complete. Um, you know, there are risk-based levels at which point there's a point of diminishing returns at which time some contamination is allowed to be left in place and there's, there's a time and a place for that. My review of this file would suggest that maybe they didn't quite finish the investigation part of the work uh, before they began the remediation. Uh, that happens when you're kind of in a hurry and trying to get things done for whatever reason quickly, but I, I wouldn't uh, stake uh, claim that the, the extent, the total extent has been defined and much less cleaned up. But for their trouble, Krygoski and Pape endured accusations that they placed the toxic waste on the Spies complex site. Bart Stupak told a Green Bay, Wisconsin television station, I see this as a small minor nuisance by some people who are known to create problems not just for Menominee but for other parts of my district. He also stated, Dale Pape planted the waste. On July 3, 2003, the Menominee Eagle Herald editorial board stated, You know, it strikes us that Pape probably should be considered as some sort of pollution superhero since he seems to find contamination wherever he cast his eye. What's amazing to me is that government officials who have particular plans for an area wouldn't want to make sure that all claims are fully investigated and then on top of it all the person that files the concern that there's an environmental uh, problem there is charged with causing it. Uh, that seems ludicrous. Why in the world if you're the cause of the environmental problem would you be the one that's uh, asking it to be investigated? That there's something wrong with that picture. Additionally, the Eagle Herald editorialized on July 3rd, 2003 that Pape may have planted the waste on the Spies site himself and quoted the consultant who conducted the alleged Phase 1 environmental assessment that the toxic waste may have been placed there after we completed our site investigation. July 7th of 2003, Mick Trevey of WBAY-TV was covering the, their exploration of what was out here. Mick came up to me and he said, you know, Dale, you understand that uh, I got a call from Congressman Stupak. I said, what? Yeah, and he said, you planted the waste out here. That's ridiculous. I would never do such a thing. There are common industrial contaminants found at any number of industries, and I think if you look around, I think people have identified some very nearby industries that, uh, that may indeed ha have a record of having used those. So I don't think there's a great mystery as to where they came from and their 
Uh, they're not uncommon. Uh, they're not supposed to be released to the environment, of course, but uh, they're not uncommon. When you go against government and say that you shouldn't proceed with something till it is safe, and then you become the target of environmental investigations, you got to ask yourself what's being, what's causing this. Uh, is this politically motivated? Is it, you know, you're going against the city hall, so to speak? An Environmental Protection Agency Superfund cleanup was ordered in 2004, but more waste was found in a wetland area that received rain runoff from the Spies Complex in 2005. Nearly 600 tons of waste was removed from the site. Usually when you find a, a drum disposal area, uh, it is a long, it's been used as a dump for many, many, many years. It's not a one-time event. While Krygowski and Pape eventually were cleared of charges of placing toxic waste on the Spies Complex site, an anonymous tip to the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality that toxic waste similar to that found on Spee's Field was located at a gravel pit location owned by John Kragowski. On October 6, 2003, Congressman Stupak wrote a letter to Thomas Skinner, Region 5 Administrator for the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, requesting that the EPA search other properties owned by Kragowski. The U.S. Coast Guard, the EPA, and DEQ subsequently obtained search warrants for the property. How you doing? Pretty good. This is a search warrant site, sir. Who are you? I work for Joe. He told me to come and camcorder this. Yeah, but this is a search warrant site, and uh, for safety reasons, we don't just let everyone just walk around here right now. Okay. Um, what we're doing is uh, we're trying to maintain the warrant, and they're, these guys are making sure that everything is is safe, but we can't just let people walk around here on a search warrant site, okay? Now, if if you had active business here, and, and this was an actual place of business today, and you were doing something here, and it was away from what we were doing, and it was safe, that would be a different story. Okay. Okay? But right now, we're not going to let just anyone walk around here, okay? So you're saying I can't be in this area? Right now, yes. Okay. All right. Okay. And your name is? My, my name is Rich Porter, okay, special Rich. agent with EPA. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, you know, I think there were, by some accounts, between 15 and 30, or uh, or more, uh, federal, state, and local agents, both by helicopter, including the Coast Guard and the U.S. EPA, all swarming on a property. And your question is, have I ever seen that? Um, only in the movies. And I've seen some very significantly contaminated sites. Uh, should that claim that there was uh, contamination being investigated? Absolutely. That's the responsibility of the government to do that. And uh, But the manner in which that was conducted certainly goes beyond what any reasonable individual would expect. And there was a verbal sign-off there that day that there was nothing to be found and that our conclusions reached in our report were validated and then later the final letter came indicating that there was in fact nothing there at the gravel pit and that it was turned out much ado about nothing. The real story here is a citizen with knowledge that needs to be shared with the public because in fact there may be an environmental hazard ends up be becoming the victim of government inspections of an unprecedented nature and intrusion into their private property, uh, and, and the individual turns out to be totally vindicated, but it has to undergo extreme duress, uh, stress on, on their personal life. Mr. Kragowski is, uh, is uh, elderly, his, his health is uh, failing, uh, this has had tremendous impact on him, but also financially. And the government can bring about tremendous, almost infinite resources against an individual. So what you end up with is the message, well, I better keep my mouth shut and I better not say anything that uh, government officials might not like because I could end up paying a price for this. This has been a production of the Mackinac Center's Property Rights Network. 